taking out time on your Sunday morning. Uh, first thing, I hope everyone can hear me. Put it on chat. Yes, no. Of yes. course, you can. Yes, we okay. can. Yes, we can. Yes. Great, great. Okay. Awesome, guys. Okay. So before we start to the session, uh, I'll quickly introduce myself. Uh, so I am the co-founder uh, and also CEO of Analytics Labs. I current the organization, uh, founded this in 2011. Overall, uh, over 15 years of experience in data science and analytics consulting domain. Uh, fortunately, I got time and uh, opportunities to work uh, in this space when it had just started. Uh, I was fortunate to learn from different geographies, working in different geographies and different uh, industry domains. Uh, so one of the quests which typically I have in all my sessions is share as much as practical uh, understanding of this space, data science as a subject, analytics, data science as a career option, uh, along with that demystifying few things because anything when it becomes so popular, so high in demand, there are a lot of mysticism which starts developing around it. So we'll also try to demystify simplify things, break down a few things for you. What we intend to cover today, uh, quickly touching upon what is data science. I guess many of you already have a good sense what is it about, uh, different type of analytics. Then typically who is a data scientist? Uh, how data science is a multidisciplinary skill, uh, what are the different areas you need to understand, and most importantly, how do you crack it? So some of you guys would have already uh, gone through my earlier sessions. Uh, so few of the things would be overlapping or somewhat repetitive, but there is no harm in understanding uh, some important aspects again. But this is one thing where I intend to spend good amount of time today that when you start your journey in data science, there are various steps to get successful. It's not just about learning tools or techniques. There has to be a very well laid out approach and where you can do it yourself, where do we, you need mentors, we address all those things. Uh, then as part of this thing only, we also understand important job roles in data science. Uh, again, this is a section which some of you might have gone through in past, but for most of you, this would be first time. And it's very important when you're thinking about career in data science, because there can be various type of job roles. How do you get started? What do you uh, target initially? What do you prepare for? Can make a lot of difference in how easily you get the success or how difficult the journey could be. So understanding all this is going to be important and little bit time on what are the popular certification courses which can help you to start with the track which you think works for you or uh, we suggest that may work for you. Having said all that, uh, we'll also be taking question and answers. One request, let's keep our questions related to the topics we are talking about, uh, especially we do not encourage that we discuss one-to-one -one profiles in this webinar. We are happy, very happy to help you with that. But those questions we can take offline. And most importantly, let's say if there are questions which go unanswered today, I would be very happy to connect with you guys during the week. Counseling team, uh, your respective career counselors can help you to get in touch with me. Uh, during the week and we can also connect one-to-one. -one. That's about it. Another thing is as part of the session, we also try to share some helpful resources with you, uh, some important blogs within which then you have some other set of learning resources, etc. 
so to ensure you get all the information uh, post the session, please share your email ID. There is a link Sabrish, my colleague has shared uh, in the chat, use that. So that post the session, you get the recording and this document where uh, for each of the section, we will have some further resources you can refer to. Right, I hope uh, this sets a context, what we are going to start with. Perfect. Uh, so guys, first a question to you. So what do you think is data science? Yeah, please share your inputs. You must have understood some part of it already. You may unmute to share your thoughts. You may uh, type in chat, what do you think is data science? And keep it simple. We don't need to get into too complex or very uh, sophisticated details as of now. No one? It's Who kind of data dealing with the insects. data, like uh, analyzing yeah. that and taking out some uh, useful insights from that raw data. Okay. That okay. Kind of making it easy to understand and to apply it into the business so that we can make decisions fastly. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, so, Misba has also shared his input all about visualization and prediction. Yes, visualization and prediction both are very important, but I won't say all about it. There are a lot many things which we'll talk about. Collection and bringing the best output. Yeah, fair way to put it. Okay, let's quickly see it. So in simple terms, data science is about gaining insights into data, right? We all understand, many of you already shared the same thing. To do so, we may need to use computation, statistical and visualization methods, right? So visualization is something many people did talk about. Uh, statistics, I understand uh, many people do know about. Uh, but when we say computation, what do we mean, mean by this? Let's say when we start applying machine learning models, there are a lot of computational methods which go into that in AI machine learning. This doesn't mean that we have to write those computation methods or algorithms, no. It's just that we have to know how do we apply and interpret them. So gaining insights through data uh, through computation, statistics, and visualization, right? Simple enough. I guess everyone would agree to this. One thing which I always like to underline is all this we do to drive smart business decisions or organizational decisions. So no matter what we do, how we do, uh, it has to be creating some value for the organization, for the business, for the research objectives or anything we want, right? Uh, this is very important because in quest of doing something fancy, learning fancy tools, techniques, many people in the beginning of their career miss this part. So if you do not focus well uh, on the outcome, all the efforts right from the beginning, what questions are you trying to solve? What problems are you trying to solve? What solutions you are trying to develop? Right from the beginning, they have to be guided for some business improvement, business performance, business increment. Now with this business increment could be improving customer service, improving customer satisfaction. It could be about, let's say, to solve a customer problem. If typically a bank takes 48 hours, can we have data science-based approach where we can reduce it to six hours, right? Or if when customer is looking for a product in a store, online or offline, can we understand their needs, preferences better so that it's easy to serve them or what they're looking for in faster and efficient manner? 
so let's not forget this that all these activities which we do they are to derive some benefits for the customers organization business and overall productivity and throughout this there is always a process uh, again interestingly many of you already mentioned this they as that it, data extraction is involved we'll talk more about this but uh, without data there is no analysis there is no science on it so we have to start by extracting data then there is a lot of processes which goes into analyzing and processing it then generating insights from the data develop some solutions from it i'll talk little bit more about this in the next slide uh, again this is we have tried to put it in simple terms there is a blog where you can find lot more details and other type of definitions which could be let's say more textbook based but as long as understanding and getting the job done this is what you need to understand at this stage and of course feel free to go through these Uh, blogs also at your ease and convenience later on. Right. Let's see if we have any questions in chat. No. Okay, we are good here. So as I said, data science is a process. When we work on data science, uh, no matter what some people may expect, some business leaders or customers may expect, it's not a magic wand. There are certain steps which goes into it. and of course this process can be understood in very detailed manner which you will be learning about once you start your learning for example this process can be broken down into so many sub steps but this is a lot more complex and you do not need to understand what we need to understand is the high level process and what do we have there first step obtaining the data so the other term which we may use is extracting the data or gathering the data so based on what is our business problem what are we trying to solve we start by gathering the data from relevant sources and there could be multiple sources uh, to gather the data it could be your transactional data let's say for a bank what is happening in their branches on their atms or online banking it could be social media data it could be uh, offline store data where customers are swiping the card and more often than not it is combination of multiple sources like these then we have to scrub the data the other term which you mostly will hear about scrubbing is data preparation and manipulation so very often when we get the data it's not clean uh, it may not be in a shape that machines can understand or it can be used for analysis okay so we have to put effort to clean that data to make that data meaningful that it holds value we can draw insights out of it and there is a very popular saying in analytics if we do not do this step right our end output also is not going to be correct so they say garbage in garbage out so to ensure that we do not have garbage in garbage out we have to deal with uh, data scrubbing data preparation and i also like to put it many times this way that this is the non glamorous side of data science so uh, some people forget to mention this some people do not uh, lay enough emphasis on this but in overall journey and the process this is non glamorous side but trust me it's most important aspect because if your beginning is not correct the output is not going to be right so once we got the data and the data is in good format which can be used for analytics we move to exploring the data that okay what are the kind of patterns we are seeing in the data so it could be some graphs charts it could be some basic analysis to understand the relationship between different variables right so for example 
we have an hypothesis. I'm sharing a very, very simple example that during monsoon season, uh, these sales of ACs do drop or the price of ACs do drop, right? Now, this is an assumption and most likely it is going to be true. But at this stage, we may test the data to see whether this is true or not. Do we get the same insights from our data? So what I've talked about is a very, very simple example, but there could be more such relationships which we want to understand in the data, which we want to explore in the data, or sometimes we initially do not have very strong hypothesis or understanding. So at this stage, we are basically getting to know better. We are getting to know our variables. And which of the data will be useful. So we may drop some unwanted data and simplify the process. Okay. <clears throat> the next step uh, is about modeling, data modeling. Now, when we say modeling, it could be our statistical models, predictive models, machine learning models, uh, where more sophisticated techniques start coming into picture. Uh, and here, when we are doing modeling, we also need to keep an eye, the models which we are making, are they making sense? Are they going to be reliable? Because as a data scientist, as a consultant, as a business analyst, you never rely blindly on your models. So when you are building the model, you would keep a very keen eye uh, to see if these models are making sense. Can we rely upon these models? Now, when I say making sense, it could mean business sense. When I say, can we rely upon these models? It could be in terms of intuitive, are the model intuitive uh, or statistically, are they coming out to be significant? So once we are satisfactory with the model performance, and most of the time this evaluation is technical in nature, when I say technical in nature, in terms of statistical or machine learning based metrics, we move to the next step, which is interpretation. So let's say we got the model, we are satisfied with that model. Now, what does that model tell us? What insights are we getting from that model? And how do we put this into use? How will business use it? Let's take an example. We are building a model to predict credit card defaulters. Let's say a credit card company has uh, customers and every month this company runs a model to predict which customers are likely to default right now it will be important that what my model is telling me that these are the type of customers which may default or these are the factors which may indicate that customers may default and these models are by the way also advanced enough, they can tell for each customer what is the probability of default, right? So once we get that output, how do we put that into use? Uh, are you going to give that to your CRM team? Are you going to give that to your risk team? Are you going to uh, ask your software engineering team to automate any actions on it? So what actions you will take based on what your models or analytics is telling you? That is another very important step. And after this, typically your engineering teams, software engineering teams do take over to develop solutions out of the model, to develop some, let's say, apps out of your analytics outputs. So those kind of things typically fall into more technical domain. But as a hardcore data science process, these are the five steps broadly, which we need to work on. Let's take a short pause. Uh, any questions, guys? Great, okay.
Now, let's understand what are the five types of analytics. We talk about data science at a very broader level right now. But now if we take one step deeper, there are multiple types or stages of analytics which we need to take care of. So first is descriptive analytics, which basically helps us to understand what has happened in the past. So we'll take uh, one or two business examples and we try to stick to those examples for all those five stages, okay? So this is the most basic stage. This is also known as MIS, reporting analytics, business intelligence, so different forms, different shapes, different names you will see. But the fundamental thing which we are trying to solve is provide insights based on the past information that what has happened in the past. So in this kind of thing, uh, typically, uh, you will use basic arithmetic, basic reporting analytics approach. We do not need statistics or anything like that. Tools like Excel, SQL, Power BI, Tableau may come into picture. And standard report generation, spreadsheet analysis, this kind of things can help us. So let's take an example. Amazon wants to understand what is the volume of sales they got for laptop category last year, right? So again, if you see the question, it is about what happened in past. Another question could be, how many intercity rides did people book on Ola or Uber, right, in last one quarter? So again, in this example also, what we are trying to answer is what has happened. So typically we need summary analytics, basic arithmetic analysis. We do not need uh, very advanced or even any statistical analysis for this stage. This is your type one. The second type of analysis is if something has happened, why it has happened. So let's say uh, Amazon got to know that Last uh, year, their laptop sales shot up by 35% in comparison to the year before, right? This is the answer they got from this. Now here they might want to understand why did it happen? Why, how come the laptop sales shot up? Where did it come from, right? Let's say they got an answer after COVID and all that, a lot of people, let's say, are working from home or there is boom in IT sector. There, these are some of the factors because of which the laptop sales have shot up. It is obvious once we understand what did happen, why did it happen, we also want to understand what could happen next. So predictive analytics helps us to understand what could happen next. So the answer which Amazon might want to get is how many laptops will they sell this year or next year, right? So in this stage, typically you will start getting uh, statistical analysis, machine learning models, because these kind of answers which are predictive in nature, we need to rely upon a more advanced uh, techniques. So the usual methods or techniques may not work in this case. And we will be relying upon techniques like predictive modeling, statistical based analysis, or machine learning. So let's say based on the past pattern, we use some method analysis and we know what is likely outcome for the next set, right? Uh, I'm using one or two type of examples. There could be many other type of examples, right? So for example, the last example, which I talked about credit card default, which customers are likely to default on the credit card, even that is a predictive analytics type of example. Or let's say we talk about over ULA uh, caps. Uh, so there could be a situation where we want to also predict that how many more customers will book intercity rides uh, in next coming quarter. 
because accordingly we might let's say want to hire more drivers or recruit more taxis so all that all those kind of decisions are highly valuable if they are driven by any kind of data driven predictive analytics approach the fourth could be prescriptive analytics where we understand what happened why did it happen what could happen next prescriptive analytics helps us to understand what should we do right so let's say we talked about uh, laptop sales and we got to know there are going to be more uh, demand for laptops is this year as well so business might want to know what should they do should they plan their supply chain accordingly should they look for more uh, suppliers who can help them to fulfill this laptop demand right there could be another example of prescriptive by all this amazon might have also understood that what type of customers do buy laptop or which type of customers could be a good target for laptop so when you go to the amazon website or app which advertisement you should get or which kind of email promotion you should get so even that is prescriptive analytics because here we are identifying the best option to choose to achieve desired outcome so let's say amazon every week sends out some offers so which customer should get an offer for laptop which customer should get an offer for mobile phone which customer should get offer for fashion or clothing accessories right even all those decisions could be prescriptive analytics now very interestingly a lot of us uh, are exposed to prescriptive analytics day in day out uh in more than one way can anyone share uh, their thoughts uh, or any example that comes to your mind where prescriptive analytics is involved and trust me you guys are exposed or subjected to prescriptive analytics almost 24 hours a day yeah simply whenever we just go on the e-commerce website and search for something um and search for any kind of like device or any product the relevant products are also flashed out yeah well yeah that's kind of prescriptive like they prescribe you can buy this you can buy this as well like like this correct that's very similar to uh what i shared but yeah good any other example guys advertisements maybe advertisements yeah the advertisement you see on let's say facebook social media platform yeah 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 absolutely good uh one which is very good and the algorithm which i believe is very effective is youtube what kind of videos you are in mood to watch what you may like to watch right what kind of songs you may like to listen right so for example all these suggestions which are coming from youtube are kind of prescriptive analytics and among various other platforms youtube and netflix these two organizations these two businesses do it quite aptly they they know it quite well what you would do uh, another example would be facebook some of you have already mentioned advertisements you get on facebook uh so that is also very apt that what kind of person may be interested in what, what kind of product so facebook comes as a very good uh, uh platform where it to discover or come across new products great uh there is another uh, answer from manish so manish stock a uh, stock market forecast yes and no uh if we are just using forecast to predict the pricing it is just the predictive analytics if on top of it we are adding layers with to help us to make a decision buy and sell let's say kind of algorithm trading so this is also very popular in many countries i think uh, in india also now it is allowed i'm not sure though so when we are applying multiple layers of techniques like optimization techniques ml techniques that becomes your prescriptive analytics and ds yes, uh, in those kind of algorithm stock market trading that is your prescriptive analytics great okay <clears throat> oh 
Okay, semi algo trading is allowed. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thanks, guys, uh, for all the answers. The last one, which is becoming quite pervasive in last few years, cognitive analytics. If I use the term AI, that is something which might be more recognizable for by everyone, where your machines are intelligent enough, or I would say the data science brain sitting in the machine is intelligent enough, which can learn and automatically take decisions on its own. This type of analytics typically need a uh, large volume of data, very complex set of algorithms. That is where your cloud computing, AWS, Google Cloud, right? these kind of things do come into picture. In fact, even in our courses, once you start moving towards AI, deep learning techniques, you typically need uh, this cloud computing power. And in short, this kind of analytics, it needs large volume of data because otherwise it, it is not very effective. The accuracy of such uh, things may not be very good because if machine has to learn that effectively, we need to feed lots of data, past historical data to the machine. And also the algorithms are complex. So we need high computing power. But talking about the examples, so the easiest example would be self-driving cars, Tesla, et cetera. Uh, chatbots, these days, even chatbots are intelligent enough that 80, 85% of the customer service solutions they can provide without being a human intervention. Your Alexa, Siri, or any other digital smart assistants. Uh, if we carry forward the same example of, let's say, Amazon selling laptops, so another example could be, now this example, of course, sits somewhere between prescriptive and cognitive, but let's say someone is placing an order, but based on the risk profile of the customer, location, gender, age, past buying history, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and someone is trying to place a cash on delivery order, Amazon may decline it. And in some cases, Amazon may allow it. So what is happening is there is an analytics engine which is doing risk assessment or fraud detection and automatically letting that transaction accepted or order accepted or not accepted. Similarly, when you are doing online transactions using credit card, whether that transaction is going to be approved or rejected, right? Now, of course, rejection could be very edge case. It may not happen very uh, frequently. But this is something which may happen and accordingly uh, your uh, engine will decide whether this transaction looks like a uh, fraud transaction or is it a legit transaction. So there are numerous examples. These are some of the examples which we can easily relate to the world around us. There is one more example uh, and we are very often uh, again exposed to it. Uh, very different from what I have talked about so far. Uh, that is image recognition. When you look at your phone or a phone is unlocking based on your facial recognition, right? that is also part of your cognitive. It's part of your AI. So it is processing an image. It is able to make a decision whether it's a your face, which basically based on which it should lock or unlock. And these engines these days are very intelligent whether you had a picture when you used to have a beard, later on you got a beard, right? Which like everyone has getting these days. <laughs> so then also your mobile can recognize that it, it's you only or whether you're wearing sunglass or you are not wearing sunglass, then also it can recognize that it's you. So even that is an example of cognitive analytics or AI, uh, artificial intelligence to put it that way. Right, so any questions or any uh, thing you guys might want to share here? Yes, uh, actually I want to ask, is uh, fingerprint det detection is also a kind of AI? Like uh, fingerprint detection is not exactly AI because relatively it's a simpler method. However, yes, it is subset. It needs kind of a image or pattern recognition. 
So there is another blog I'll probably ping during the break, which is, is talking about machine learning, data mining, and pattern recognition. So fingerprint is your pattern recognition subset, but why it does not need same level of intelligence because the amount of data you need to process and the amount of variation which you can get is far lower than in comparison to recognizing the face. So in fingerprints, once that data is fed, right, that pattern has been identified, that pattern does not change. The variation does not happen uh, that much in comparison to facial recognition. So it's more of pattern matching, pattern recognition, uh, not really AI. I would say it's a, you can say a smaller application or simpler application in comparison to facial recognition. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Good. Uh, one important thing we must understand, the journey from basic to advanced, whether you are an organization or you are an individual goes like this only. So no organization which let's say right now has cutting edge technology or it's a tech forward organizations like Amazon, Uber, Ola or some for foreign banks, fintech companies, even if they are excelling in prescriptive and let's say cognitive analytics, they always have to start from descriptive because until unless you do not have the data right, you do not understand the past pattern or history from the data it will be very difficult to make uh, strong decisions or reliable uh, predictions from that data. So you may want to achieve this, let's say next six months, next one year, you want to be someone who can actually work on predictive, prescriptive, cognitive, but you can't directly jump here. You need to take a step, a stepwise approach, add skills, begin from here, because how you deal with the data, it's all interrelated here. So to model the data, all these steps have to be done better. So if you try to think about it, exploring is kind of your descriptive and diagnostic analysis only understanding what is going in the data. What is my data telling me? What are my variables telling me? What is the relationship between these variables? Right? So I hope this one point which I have underlined, you guys do acknowledge and understand it uh, because from career point of view, it's extremely important. Sir, I have a question. Can you ask? Yeah, please. Is descriptive you know, learning descriptive analysis is uh, enough to enter into the entry level data science jobs? Because uh, See, you said that it's a uh, first step. You cannot jump yeah. into the... Yeah, good point. I would be actually addressing this also. So theoretically, yes. If you want to, let's say, just start as a data analyst, okay? Uh, and you say, I will start with basic jobs, so I just want to learn descriptive analytics. Fair enough. Uh, theoretically, it works. In many cases, in fact, we also suggest that, right? But when we look at the job market and the real world competition, in those cases, it is recommended that you do add at least some statistical and predictive analytics because even if your initial job 80, 90 or 100% is going to be on descriptive, recruiters do want candidates or would prefer candidates who can, if needed, move to further form of analytics. So in fact, when we, talk, when we discuss how do we crack it and all that, th this is one point I have already underlined or highlighted to discuss. So yes, the simple answer is yes. However, to get hired fast, to be differentiated from the competition, there are some set of analysis you should, some set of skills you should add, at least from basic predictive analytics point of view. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right. So this brings us uh, to Another fundamental question then, who is a data scientist? By now, I understand, we understand the answer notionally. You can say data scientist who does all this, right? Uh, but again, to put it in a simple manner, 
one definition which i really like is a data scientist is someone who knows more statistics than a computer scientist and more computer science than a statistician this may sound little silly or funny but the essence is for data scientist you don't need to be a hardcore programmer or a computer scientist but at the same time you don't need to be a hardcore statistician or let's say researcher who is working in statistics so data science is a role which needs multiple skills and in a way you can uh, put it this way it is jack of all trades I, and i won't say master of none i would say master of few so you need to know multiple things and few things you need to really do well to be a successful data scientist uh because this question many people do ask that okay uh, i am not from programming background i am not from computer science background for example even i am not from programming background or computer science background i am mechanical engineer by education uh guys please uh sorry so you don't need to learn programming like a software developer you need not need to learn let's say java or python that the way that you have to develop software applications you just need to learn python so that you can extract data manipulate or prepare data and analyze data you don't need to write machine learning algorithms you just need to use them you should know that what statistics has to be applied at what stage or in what kind of problem you don't need to derive statistical uh, theorems or axioms you just need to apply them and interpret them right another important way to look at it is really really breaking it down at elementary level you need to know statistics programming as a coach you can let's say when you step up in the role you progress you can coach your junior team members you are a storyteller that insights which we have got the answers we have got can you explain that uh to a non technical people many of the times your business leaders your clients they will not be non they won't be technical people so can you simplify things and explain your analysis to non technical people why artist because it's not always about techniques or tools we many times say that analytics or data science is not a pure science you need to strike a balance that uh you, some intuition some business sense some business logic along with your analytics techniques that's very important you will see lot of people do uh, put hours weeks in a project just working on techniques uh, methods etc but still the output is not satisfactory because they are not balancing it out with more logical and intuitive thinking or with the business, not thinking from the business angle so it's an art and part science where you have to apply science overlaying the business outcome or develop some business sense and business acu acumen that what you are doing is actually going to be useful again connected to what i mentioned in the very beginning that to gain insights and drive smart business decisions so putting everything into context it's a multidisciplinary role <clears throat> so you need some business skills you need some technology skills you need some analytic skills excuse me i need to take up a quick one minute pause that we can we can do is you know thanks abhi okay so guys it's a multidisciplinary skill and broadly there are three aspects to it business skills technology skills and analytic skills so depending upon who you are one area might be your strength and you may pick a role or career track starting from that side so for example 
let's say if there is someone who is a beginner in career, zero to two, three years of experience and comes from non-technical background, right? So you may pick up and have more focus on analytic skills, data mining and visualization, some statistical predictive modeling, right? Let's say you do have aptitude for it or you want to excel and go more on it, you may also add machine learning skills. Whereas someone who is coming from hardcore technology background, let's say you have been into BI development, software development, data management related roles, you may begin from this side and pick up roles which are more focused on data engineering, data architect, machine learning operations or machine learning engineers. And if you are, let's say, someone with 5, 10, 15 years of experience, you do come from business background, right? Now, this is actually hard to find skill. People who understand that domain and business very well, uh, because you may play a role of analytics consultant, analytics leaders, uh, where your role is to ensure business inputs are taken into consideration whenever there is an analytics project going on. There is effective implementation, whatever we are analyzing or putting to use. Uh, again, this is something we also touched upon as part of data science process. Mm -hmm. And whole analytics project exercise, which organizations are working on, they are driving some business value. That is, a whole combination of a successful data science practice in any organization. So you would need people from business side of the things, you would need people from the technology side of the things to move it. And you would need, of course, people from hardcore analytics skills. So who you are, what is your strength? What is your education background? If you have any experience, right? There are various ways to approach the career and get started with it. So many times we see people who have been, let's say, into uh, industry for 15 years. They have played role in sales and marketing. They have also been played role of information technology at various roles. They, by learning analytics and how does it work, what are different stages, how does the analytics project management work, they begin with this kind of role. It is quite appropriate for them. Someone who has five, 10 years of experience and understand banking and finance to mean fairly well, right? They may start their career more on the consulting analytics side that let's say when a bank is adopting data science or analytics, how is it going to be used? The analytics projects which are going on, are they going to actually drive some business value or bank may keep investing uh, in lot of data scientist or analyst hiring, but they are not able to uh, give any real outcome or output uh, because there was a disconnect between the business and whole of the analytics projects which were going on. And needless to say, things do not move without data engineering. This is one thing we will also talk about uh, in some detail at later section, about two sections later. Because in the world we live in, there are so many different sources of data, so many types of data. How that data becomes accessible, how that data becomes useful uh, is extremely important because if this guy is not available to do the job, these guys cannot do anything because then there is no data they can consume or they can work upon. So everyone with their variation, the backgrounds, education, uh, experience do bring different set of values on the table and help any organization to make a successful data science practice, right? But one key uh, takeaway from this slide is based on your profile, not everyone needs to be a data scientist. You may start as data analyst, business analyst, analytics consultant. You may start as data engineer, right? Some people may be able to directly start as data scientist, but for all these roles, 
the data science education is extremely important so analytics education data science education is kind of becoming it skills how it skills became important in late 90s or 2000s right now it goes without saying no matter what role you are working on you have basic it skills similarly how things are changing and how data is becoming so important to the whole uh, uh, industry every kind of industry i would say uh, in every role you need those data analytics skills in the one or the other form so any questions guys you have on this one uh hi samit drishti desai yeah hi please go ahead uh, so uh i just wanted to ask regarding my background you said you have described different you know set of skills for people who belong to a different background so i just mm -hmm. wanted to know according to you what would be the best suited background uh, you know profile for a person who is coming from you know back end operations sort of work because i have been working in a back end operations for the past 3 years so drishti see there are uh, first thing is although i mentioned i will not take one to one profiles but let's take this example it may help others also okay now here it also depends when you say back end operations what industry second what is your education background okay uh, so i'm i'm from i'm a commerce graduate and i'm working as a fraud analyst in american express okay okay so drishti the role you can take is of data analyst or business analyst right where skills pertaining to these two are must okay now depending on your aptitude and interest pure data science based learning where machine learning also comes into picture could be an option okay however the idea is after 3 years of experience and someone coming from non technical education background uh, and on top of it let's say you are already working in industry which very well exploits data or data analytics right so you would stand a very very strong chance to switch your career from fraud analyst to data analyst or business analyst <laughs> and along the way progress more towards A typical data scientist role, but the progression towards will depend upon your interest on uh, these skills, these applications, and your performance. Thank you, Sumit. Most welcome. <clears throat> and by the way, the answer could have changed if, let's say, someone with same education background, same domain. had 10 or 15 years of experience right in that case the role would have been targeted more at analytics consultant side so a so, lot of these things do vary and that's why it's important that some of the questions we address offline uh because there is no single or best answer for everyone experience education uh let's say interest aptitude lot of things we do evaluate to make one to one suggestions for the career track hi yeah hi, hi. hi sumit hi sumit hi sumit uh, my name is aman abdul uh, actually i just yeah. want to talk to you one on one is it possible mm -hmm. after this session or uh, in the working days raman it would be totally possible uh, if you have already shared the details with the team Uh, or whoever is your respective counselor just uh, connect with them and they will help you we may not be able to connect today but definitely during the week uh, let's say tuesday wednesday we will be able to connect okay okay i want to speak with uh, the person who can assist me regarding the consultation so sure, sure. we will be happy to connect yeah yeah thank you hi sumit yeah uh, i done my graduation on physics and arts what kind of uh, what type of uh, uh, ex, uh, course for uh, suitable for me can so you say please typically people from stem background you can simply go with data science uh, based course 
so in terms of the overall profile hiding desirability it becomes much easier and stem background is definitely going to be more conducive for that okay thank you thank you right and this is this is one thing we'll come to but let's quickly uh, look at one very important part of the slide of the webinar so <clears throat> first thing is we understand that domain we understand a uh, broader set of skills which we need now how do we start on this right we break this down into four parts uh of course some part of it some of you could take a approach this more based on self learning uh <clears throat> some of this could be based on mentored guidance or a professional course kind of what we are providing some of this could be based on blended learning again something we have to offer but most importantly irrespective of how you go about it what are the different steps let's understand that first is the prerequisites understands about the data science domain if it's really for you right so don't jump into the domain just because you heard it's going well and all that see if you if this is something which excites you if this is something interests you let's say dealing with data drawing insights from data or uh solving business problem right uh, consultative kind of approach in the work is that something which you like right try to answer some of these questions try to see how does it work in different organizations let's say banking telecom retail online offline retail supply chain so in different business areas organizations what role does data science play what are the different job roles and career paths many of you might have let's say already attended past sessions or already have answered these things right uh, otherwise in later part of the webinar i will be throwing more light on these two aspects and help you uh, answer those things so a bit of it we already did here in the previous slide but we will deep dive into it uh based on how we actually uh, enterprise level analytics works and what are the different job roles so this these two things i'll try to help but of course you need to spend more time on it in terms of read information blogs uh, some of the blogs as part of this deck we are putting in the footnote attend webinars like these there could be ebooks uh, you can read so reading is essentially something which is going to be very helpful and don't ignore that then meetups uh, of course pre covid a lot of these meets up used to be offline now they are more online but network learn about the industry domain and these are some of the areas where you can look for uh, for all this information or better understanding right but for now to use have good put uh, good use of your time this morning this is something i will try to answer you by the time we close the session then other thing is acquiring in demand skills which you need for a successful career so what do we mean by that we talked about data science as a process right there are various type of job roles here right now what are the skills which are needed there are skills needed for data extraction there are skills needed for data preparation there are skills needed for data exploration presenting visualization uh, your statistical modeling predictive modeling machine learning modeling and interpreting again the communication side so gain those skills uh, and there are some popular set of tools you should keep in mind excel Uh, going strong for decades and still this is one most basic step you should have as part of your skills sql similarly like excel still uh, going strong for decades of course now we have more cloud based approach in these things so these two tools for example do help you with basic data preparation manipulation we bring tableau in the equation it also helps you with the visualization 
So if you look at these first three uh, tools, uh, right? This is essentially going to help you uh, with these three bullet points. Now, <clears throat> some people do ask us that I do not have maths background. I do not have statistical concepts. Uh, I, I did not study statistics. Or so sometimes we hear this very often. I, I studied statistics, but that was in school and college. I don't remember it or it was many years back. So first thing is, I you do not need to know all these things as a pure uh, statistician or a pure researcher, which I already addressed earlier also. We need to understand these things uh, just from application point of view, that when do we apply what and how do we interpret it, right? So that part, trust me, is not very difficult. Spending just 6, 8, 10, 12 hours, maximum 15 hours, right, is going to do the thing for you. And even in our courses, that is how we structure at different junctures, we introduce these concepts so that you understand it, not theoretically, but more practically that how do you apply and how do you interpret these things? So don't be scared of it, embrace it. So these three skills are absolutely essential, even when you're thinking about a basic data analytics career. What are the different uh, sources you can opt for? Uh, MOOCs, which is basically massive online open courses. We all know there are open courses available on YouTube, on uh, this course here, etc. In just 500 rupees, 700 rupees. So basically, this is a route which is self learning, right? This is another very important question, or I would say frequent question, which is asked to me in corporate trainings, corporate workshops. So I'll, I'll come back to this point uh, in a couple of minutes. Then we have blended learning options. Let's say even we have where you have e-learning, uh, you learn through videos, ads per your own convenience, pay speed. But at the same time, there are regular support, doubt sessions, case study sessions conducted every week, right? So that kind of blended learning approach you can take. Or of course, instructor-led live online training session, the one like we are having right now. There could be instructor at boot camps. Let's say you are absolutely a beginner. You have time to attend training every day of the week. Uh, for a working professional, it could be weekends. For someone who has time every day of the week, boot camp could be a great option. Right? So there are different ways to acquire these technical skills. Now, coming back to MOOCs and YouTube, so this is something which works for few people. It may not work for everyone and there are following reasons for it. One, generally there are no doubt support or mentors uh, along with these options. And as we progress through the next step, especially understanding some real world challenges, interview preparation and all that. So these things do not uh, support, uh, you do not have support for it. And other thing is data science is very vast step. When you start learning on your own uh, as a beginner, when you're working towards a career transition, starting a career, changing career, a lot of mentorship guidance, expert guidance, I would say is needed. So that aspect is lacking big time uh, in this option. Uh, however, if let's say you are someone who is already working in analytics, you are working in descriptive analytics, you just want to learn one particular technique, right? Or let's say you are already working in machine learning, you just want to learn uh, some deep learning techniques. So those are the scenarios where you are upskilling in the same domain and just adding some advanced skills. These options do work. Uh, there are very few people for whom this may work when you are planning to start a career or planning a career transition uh, for the reasons I have already explained that expert guidance, mentorship, and being a vast field 
what to focus on, what to deprioritize, where you should spend your time, all those things, that, that, that is one shortcoming for these learning models. So again, I have. it's not that it does not work for it, but it works in specific cases when you are already working in a domain and you are upskilling to learn some more advanced techniques. So in those cases, this could be a very good option. But otherwise, when you are learning, even with these kind of models, any of these models, this could be a supportive thing. Uh, many students still, uh, when let's say co completed a course, they want to deep dive into a particular topic and all that, or even while during the course. Uh, so this could be a good support option uh, if needed to deep dive into some topics. Now, this part I have left uh, untouched earlier, but I have highlighted. So let me come to this part. So what happens uh, when you are starting your career, especially as a beginner, even if your designation is data scientist, it is possible 70-80% of the times you are working as data analyst, only 20-30% of the times uh, you are playing the role of data scientist or it is possible you are actually hired as a data analyst and first two, three years, first one, two years, you are expected to work as data analyst. But when it comes to interviews, when it comes to competing with, let's say, five more candidates for one position or 10 position, we have often seen candidates do prefer uh, sorry, companies do prefer candidates where they have these skills. Now, the degree of these skills can vary. If someone is, let's say, coming from uh, education background or aptitude where we feel they can do this, we suggest that you completely go till the end and your salary package, your uh, propensity or prospects to getting higher will be much more than just based on the basic skills. But let's say there is a candidate where aptitude or education background does not support machine learning uh, in the beginning phase, then at least we highly recommend you focus on statistical and predictive analytics and do learn to like Python, etc. one of these tools, uh, because this is probably unsaid rule, but even for a role of data analyst, they would expect you to know Python or R or both uh, up to an extent that you know statistical analysis. And as you start uh, the job as part of your on-job training in about six months, one year, as organizations progress, you can adopt machine learning because even learning this can lay a very strong foundation, right? So this is the reason uh, even if you basically beginning a ta ta targeting a role of data analyst, but learning these or at least this becomes imperative because our end goal is getting hired. You, your goal is also getting hired. Our goal is also to enable you a successful career transition. We are not just here to impart you Excel or SQL or Tableau or Python training. Uh, for us, that's not the job then. For us, the job is done when you actually make that successful career transition and you get the job which was suitable for you or what we begin uh, with the whole objective of starting any upskilling or uh, uh, career transition course. So before I move to the next part, any questions on these two blocks anyone has? Any more clarity you need on any of these things? Hi, Sumit. Yes, please go ahead. Hi. Sumit, this is Moon Balloon, and I just need to confirm, as you said, like uh, three uh, basic uh, things which uh, one should know, like Excel and uh, SQL and Tableau, right? So yeah. I just need to uh, understand, like in most of the companies, Power, Power BI is used, right? And yeah. uh, Tableau is not much in demand because it is quite costly. So, uh, like, uh, will Tableau and uh, Power BI will work in the same manner or like they are different? Good question. And in fact, I was anticipating this question that someone would ask. 
so the scenario which you have mentioned we are anticipating in about an year or two it will be like that right now tableau and power bi are neck to neck and the reason be tableau had a very very uh, head start in comparison to power bi so lot of organization even 10 years back had adopted tableau and that advantage of uh, an early mover is still with tableau if we see the absolute number of jobs in industry uh, they are still slightly higher on tableau but as i said this is going to change uh, in future we anticipate that in fact we have a program which is uh, validated and mandated by nascom and government of india that is also based on tableau however acknowledging the industry trends which we are very very agile to and make changes we do have a power bi course also so let's say whoever is going through any course and they want to have uh, additional power bi course uh, it is available at a very very nominal or uh, uh, small cost uh, but again coming to an answer see tool is one thing the approach the thought process is another thing so let's say you know how do you do data analytics and uh, visualization using tableau and tomorrow you come across a job which needs power bi even that company would understand that within a week or two you can switch from tableau to power bi because the tool may change but that thought process that approach to analyze the data to present and visualize that data that will still remain same so that fungibility between tableau and power bi will be same both are neck to neck competitor in one or the other category if you have to choose one we as an organization analytics labs always focus on number of jobs as i said that is our target right so hence it's tableau it's possible next year when we see that number of job trends has completely flipped right we would put power bi as a main and tableau as an optional right now we have tableau as a main and power bi is optional but as a student if you want to learn if you feel the need right it just a, let's say you have done the course and you did learn tableau it will take you less than one week to do power bi uh, bec uh, because that let's say after down the line six months you got a job option where they are saying okay we are happy we are ready to hire you but can you also learn power bi before you join it will just take a week so from that point of view doesn't matter both belong to similar class and category it's more about developing that skill in terms of thought process and approach okay so much that's great mr mr bansal hi uh, sorry one by one uh, you have any follow up question yeah i just need to know one more thing uh, so it's like this power bi so uh, will it be provided in an e learning um, like e learning yeah. software will be provided to us or uh, this e one to one e e learning but with doubt doubt support okay so doubt clarification classes will be there right yeah yeah that you can do one to one also okay thank you so much okay oh. perfect great yes there was some other question also yeah um, mr mr bansal hi uh, good afternoon uh, yeah. Related to the previous question is, I have a question, comparison of R and Python. Mm -hmm. I had done some work in R many, many years ago, but now my impression is a lot of emphasis is on Python and Python is almost exclusively used uh, in data science, almost preferred more. Uh, I want to check with you, what are your thoughts in terms of, is it okay if somebody focuses purely, purely on Python or there are elements of R which are relevant in the industry? Again, I know I appreciate that you are very well focused around the industry demand. So yeah. it would be helpful to hear your, your views, whether kind of R is required for some elements or Python is good enough along with the libraries. Thank sure. you. To answer this question very simply, Python alone is enough, right? If we talk about the current job environment. In fact, uh, just three, two, three years back, we were doing a course with both Python and R, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. we also want to strike a balance that as a learner, 
how much you can put effort how much you can learn in a span of 6 months or so mm-hmm. so if we feel that that effort does not bring that roi mm-hmm. we make those changes in the course Makes to answer sense. your question python alone is enough however mm-hmm. let's mm-hmm. now look at one step deeper if we talk about data science jobs more than mm-hmm. 95% share mm-hmm. would be r and uh, python okay mm-hmm. out of which 80% is python very comfortably and about 20 25% would be r mm-hmm. hence in case of for example tableau and power bi we said it's quite close neck to neck but in this case of python is evidently ahead very ahead yes uh, that's the reason now we have a program we are again r is available optional at very nominal cost right uh and lot of emphasis while the course is going is on python the idea is let's say you have bandwidth and once you have learned python that well it will be cake walk to go to r also mm. uh, and there could be a situation for those 15 20% of organizations if you want to be extra ready that you say i want to maximize the job prospects no matter what we say okay first learn python and here is r for you with all the support in some cases this has happened earlier it used to happen the student used to learn r when r was ahead of python but they used to come across job interviews they would say we can see you have learned r but we need python can you do this in two weeks can you do this in one week or before you join can you come uh, with python skills also now it is other way around so in for those 15 20% of the cases we do have r available as e learning again with the doubt support so available at a very nominal cost and it's exactly for those scenarios there are people who have the bandwidth and they want to be well prepared for maximize the job prospects or in the situation they come across a job scenario where they are asking for r so you have learning avenue available with the support and with very very nominal cost okay thank you thank you very much great <clears throat> okay the third thing is preparing for the real world challenges so till this part we do the job right but it's still half the job done because if we learn these skills we know, know these tools it's not fully done uh, if we do not understand the industrial applications of it and especially in the key business domains let's say someone is a fresher it's very important that you develop that thought process that how data science will solve different type of business problems if you are coming from let's say um, banking and sales or marketing background or ba- uh, let's say retail background then for that particular domain of course people would expect that you know how data science is going to drive the whole business value so this is important some part of it at least when you are learning with us is getting covered while you're working on assignments uh, case studies but for example we also do industry sessions uh, when you have completed the course even your capstone projects at sector are going to be very much focused on the kind of problems you face in the industry now <clears throat> uh of course again if you are let's say taking a self learning approach right then there are some online community platforms where you may get these projects there could be some hackathons Uh, but overall when you are taking up any professional course this is this should be and this is generally the part of your course where the capstone projects you get and some mentored industry sessions some of this is delivered to everyone some of this is also one to one let's say when you are preparing for the interview you come from a different background than let's say your batch or your peer group so even from that point of view that industry mentor sessions one to one while helping to prepare for your cv profile etc uh, we do help with the other important thing is people to understand working on the projects understand the business applications 
however they do not lay an explicit focus on problem solving so trust me analytics or data science job when if you remember i did talk about these two things storyteller and artist right so this problem solving in communication is extremely important how do you approach a problem not just from data science point of view but logically right how do you communicate the results to non technical people to business people that is extremely important then how do you <laughs> let's say come across a problem where data is partially correct but you have to you there is an urgency to answer that question now how do you take care of it how will you think of proxy data sources uh, to fulfill that so the general problem solving business problem solving logical thinking is extremely important even in many data science interviews or almost all data science interviews you would see typically there are problem solving rounds there are puzzle rounds interview puzzles etc so that part is also important we uh, lay a lot of emphasis reference material is shared for this right <coughs> uh but why i do highlight it uh, some people take this as obvious or for given or they do not think about it explicitly or they do not work on this explicitly and it does have a lot of bearing when you actually go out and face the interview i have seen numerous cases where someone was not able to let's say correctly uh, write the command in sql or python right but just because how logically and how much structured manner they could answer the question or uh, sh share their thought process that i do not know the command but this is how we can approach it or this is how we can solve it still they are getting through the interviews so in analytics interviews your approach thought process problem solving aptitude is again very very important now having said that let's say you do all this how how does an employer know how would a company know uh, that all the skills which you have mentioned are valid or you what you have mentioned is right so all this effort would uh, be a good fruit or let's say recognizing or getting your cv shortlisted any accredited certification reputed certification you should think about so when i say certification of course it is let's say the programs like what we have or other uh, companies do provide sometimes it's possible that you are uh, you have not gone through the certification but you were able to you were lucky to get some uh, internship right which indicates that you went through a six months internship and hence uh, that letter or internship certificate uh, from an organization is good enough to have some trust in what you have written on your cv or profile so any kind of accreditation most commonly any reputed certification uh, is something which uh, you should consider because getting cv shortlisted will be much easier uh, in this manner right <coughs> the last thing is uh, preparing your project portfolio so when you are working on the course where capstones or you have worked on let's say some hackathons uh we typically advise and most people do that you also put these projects uh, on github uh, not openly available but available on request let's say you put that on your cv employers can request for it employers can look for it uh, so that is important if not portfolio on github or something at least have these projects very well mentioned and laid out on your profile or cv uh then your profile building if you are a fresher if you are a person with 3 years of experience 2 years of experience if you are a professional 15 years of experience now how do you blend these new skills 
with the industry or with your past education or job background so that's also very important accordingly conducting interviews <clears throat> the funny thing is uh, in this is 2012 when i started uh, in the initial days uh, i got one student who paid 10000 rupees to a, a online company i will not name that company to prepare the cv now based on the that cv he actually got multiple interview calls in in a span of one week about three or five i don't know but multiple interview calls but when he attended those interview he was blank he, he did not know how to answer it so it is equally important if you have added skills uh, you should be able to project that well on the cv but at the same time if you have mentioned the skills on your cv you should be able to answer them and back them with your explanation and understanding so in this regard <clears throat> not everyone but many people do need mock interviews uh, right interview guidance this could come from your expert mentors uh, who are let's say helping you through the course or your professional peer groups again there could be some online community platforms for this <clears throat> uh the next thing is online and offline job networks <clears throat> so any institute you join of course would have any good institute would have a role to play in referring your cv helping you getting connected with opportunities right but your effort from your side also should be very well focused in this regard your linkedin profile your monster nokri.com profile or offline meetups uh, recruitments these kind of things you should also be fully aware and actively taking participation we see this very often a student went through interview rounds two or three times based on what we referred but could not crack but was applying also from his or her end job network portals how they were advised or suggest so efforts from all all the sides offline offline institute yours uh, is going to play a very cru crucial role how you get an opportunity or let me put it suitable opportunity then for many of you it might also be important uh, <clears throat> internships and this is of course not uh, option most of the time if you have with already 5 10 years of experience but let's say someone who has zero years of experience uh, no, or someone who had 2 3 years of experience or short tenure but not working now be open to start your career with internships uh, you may not like to work as an intern but trust me in turn of 3 months 6 months can really do wonders uh, to kick off your uh, career and uh, actually when you start the job you start with much, much more confidence and in much more robust manner uh, in these kind of cases <clears throat> then the job applications you apply uh, let's say through institute or on your own it is also important to understand the feedback and work on it we do not expect that every interview or the very first interview you go through you 100% of people will crack some people are more successful than the others so constantly working whoever you are taking support your peer group your mentors right uh, that this is how my interview went through uh, but constantly i am facing challenge with this or based on what kind of feedback you get from the interviewer uh, uh you work on it so of course it's not applicable for everyone uh but when and wherever needed proactively seek feedback and work on it one thing which i tell everyone all my students that when you are facing interviews one you should always ask questions towards the end of the interview two your question could be very effectively that what do you think i can do more uh 
to be successful in this role or what do you think is a shortcoming in my current performance or profile which could stop me to perform well in this role so this is an indirect way to asking the feedback right and right there even if you get selected or do not get selected you know what are the areas you should be working on right so of course putting all these pieces together it's a journey which takes time it's a step by journey but trust me the career in data science and analytics is definitely very engaging high growth uh, there could be of course more career options which are paying well but at the same time it's an interesting one where you learn about problem solving you understand about new domains new technologies new business problems every day in span of 15 years i have seen like dozens of different type of business models which if i tell you you cannot imagine can even exist uh, starting from bay area to silicon valley of india bangalore so that's very interesting part uh, about career in analytics and data science apart from being a high growth career so in short lot of things to do but with the uh, first thing it's totally worth to do for a enriching uh, career if you are thinking about a long term uh, second with the professional guidance mentor it's not difficult to do all you would need some consistency and regularity while you're going through it right so let me take a pause here and let's see if you have any questions okay uh, one question from dp is on the project work okay i'll answer that uh, anything else uh, on this slide which uh, you want me to elaborate more or discuss more uh, yeah uh, samit so you said that internship is a great part okay it plays a great role when it comes to learning right so yeah. i just wanted to ask you ki whether like we we are uh we have to mandatorily do it along with a full time job or there is some setup that we can skip it i mean how we are going to no, go about it let's say let's say someone is already working in that case it it is it does not come into picture right this is primarily for people who are not working at the moment or let's say they are working but by the time the course is completing they want to quit and focus totally on this and then uh, move ahead right so there are <clears throat> different permutation combinations however to simply answer your question no it's not mandatory and we totally understand for someone who is working with certain amount of experience it is not mandatory okay okay hi sumit hi uh just adding to the prior question i just need to understand like uh, as you said uh, an internship is not required if a person is working but uh, mm -hmm. i just need to understand uh, do uh, analytics lab will provide us the um, live projects so that we get uh, the insight of that particular thing sure see the whole concept of live projects is actually a misnomer or i would say a bit of marketing gimmick uh, think of this way there are data privacy and very strict data governance laws any worthy organization you would want to work with has in place so any institute which says uh, you will work on live project is actually not correct if you dig deeper you would realize it most of the times it works let's say if you are doing a post graduate program of 2 years and you are formally going on a capstone or industry collaboration project so it happens in few cases in many cases what we see is uh, what they would do is in the name of live project let's say the trainer is working somewhere and the project they are working on they will just show you that project on your laptop and they say say this is how a live project works so the approach which we take is people who are working with us on internship yes of course they are uh, uh, engaged on the live projects but the projects or the capstones which you work as part of the course which let's say everyone works on is close to real life or real life project what does that mean these are the projects which we worked in past 
uh, now what we do we we cannot share the client data with you we sanitize that data we modify that data but the problem the complexity the challenges and the learnings you need to have on job they remain same similarly there are many projects which uh, you will be working on as part of course which were hiring hackathons uh, the companies uh, floated it to hire data scientists or business analysts right so it's a combination of different projects from various sources but they are not like textbook uh, projects with 50 data points or 100 data points and five simple questions no it doesn't work like that at analytics labs so you will begin with one simpler case studies which would have yes that question answer approach those are not case studies those are your assignments in the beginning part but the capstone projects and the the major projects you would be working on are either past industrial projects which we worked on uh, for example we have another company alabs.ai which do engage in multiple projects uh, then there are the projects which hiring partners used for uh, hiring and when we saw it was a good hiring hackathon or a good uh, project we also adopt that then there are projects even we see in uh, global platforms like say kaggle.com etc which were very good in terms of learning and the real life complexities we adopt that so in short these projects would be real life like uh, they may not be always live projects few of you may work on live based on what internship opportunity uh, you have got okay so thank you thank you so much welcome okay there is another example uh, question from dp which is related to this so dp let's let's just share some examples uh, one case study in data visualization could be on uh, retail sales let's say there is a sports company which is selling different uh, sports equipments and all that so it's a simple case study to analyze their sales patterns trends and in drawing sides out of it right there could be one case study uh, let's say as we move more advanced on credit card segmentation that a bank has a sample of 5000 credit card customers they want to understand their spending pattern uh, who spends in what kind of situations do they spend on installments or do they spend on one time payments uh, who has high risk or high balance outstanding right what are their demographics so more of consumer insights for a banking problem another could be a healthcare company has a lot of phone calls and those phone calls has been uh, changed into text data speech to text using nlp and text mining we want to understand the reasons for which most of the customers do call classify those calls automatically right and uh, what are the complaints or the key concerns which customers have which uh, that healthcare company or insurance company should uh, focus on another could be a retail company has let's say 200 stores in a country and they want to forecast the expected demand uh, and sales forecasting uh, for next six months for next one year i'm just sharing some examples from top of my mind on all our course pages you will be able to see a lot of details for these case studies and they also keep changing uh, time to time uh, <clears throat> but just to give you a flavor starting from basic reporting analytics to visualization uh, starting from then moving to statistical analysis and predictive modeling and moving on to machine learning and NLP. You have various type of problems to work on and industries would be typically where you see most of the jobs, retail, healthcare, banking, etc. Hello, Sumit. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yeah, myself Mahesh, I am working in bank uh, since nine years. If I learn this uh, business analytics and what will be my chance if the person who is already having nine years experience in analytics and with uh, myself with domain knowledge and having analytics, what is the chance of getting hired? Uh, so Mahesh, uh, in that case, the approach you should take is not as an individual role as a data analyst 
or someone your approach would be more as a managerial role consulting role and stick to banking domain so let's say uh, we can work with you to modify certain things on your profile but your role could be let's say in banking as of now you are looking in sales or crm let's say relationship management right so with these skills and all that in the same domain this as an additional skill or changing into a role where you are driving similar kind of teams or working with similar kind of teams but using data analytics so for example a lot of sales can be done with analytics based sales and planning right so in past we have seen these kind of uh, many profiles and banking is one area where we do get a lot of students so again you should not be targeting a role as a data analyst or data scientist but more as an analytics manager or manager who understands how to leverage analytics or be responsible for analytics delivery in banking projects okay thank so you so on similar lines i so there's a question from mr kumar uh so see i will not pick any particular institute name or anything uh but our our focus is totally based on industry demand job and transitions so there can be variety of certifications in industry of course we can talk about what we have and why do we have it some part of it we will leave up to you to evaluate so for example cbap we are very well aware of but we do not uh, go with that because that is not very widely known uh, in indian job market or for that matter even we had ibm certification uh, till off late right now we are uh, not doing ibm but we are giving you option for ibm certification if you want to do it along with our course so for example the flagship course which we have uh, it's actually backed by nascom uh, which is basically a joint uh, uh, initiative by ministry of information technology and nascom so this course uh, data science 360 is backed by government of india and aligned to nine occupational standards in the space of emerging technologies so the role of business analyst data analyst data scientist so and it also falls under the advanced deep skill category so not many courses can uh, align to this framework and how do you get this validation companies like e ey deloitte basically consulting companies which understand this data science domain very well they do validate your course content and the structure right so uh, you can also understand the validation of this course uh, that post completion of certification you also get a direct incentive from government of india for 8000 rupees right so to answer your question uh, it will be very easy to if you see the depth the breadth and the support of the course we have analytics labs has been in this domain since 2011 it's 11 years now which is not easy to uh, such a long standing and reputation for such a long time without doing a good work then having a course mandated by government of india and uh, the industry body like nascom uh, but coming to your question even in our course there is an option you want to go for ibm certification we can assist you with that it's just that we have kept it optional uh, there are few things which makes the course otherwise very expensive if we do not see any explicit benefit out of it so we make those optional so till december we had ibm certification even now if any students would uh, wish to pursue it that option is available and your admission counselor can guide you you can pursue it uh, as part of the course parallelly also with small little additional effort and without any extra cost also so that option is there okay uh uh so dp has another question so let me uh take few more minutes uh and we i want you to really understand a couple of things uh, 
where automatically many of your questions will get answered, right? So please be patient. Uh, you have been quite uh, uh, helpful so far. Uh, so we'll go through some details and the job roles. Understanding the course will become easier. So guys, uh, I'm getting a little bit into the technical aspect and why I'm doing so. This will help you to understand the job roles better, right? But I will still keep it very, very simple. If we talk about our present industry scenario, we have multiple sources of data, right? Uh, your typical transactional data, structured data, right? Your data from smart devices like say cars, smart watches, phones, etc. Your social media data, etc. Right? Uh, data from variety of productivity apps, enterprise apps, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, before this data can be consumed for analytics or data science, right? Where we typically do reporting analytics, descriptive analytics, visualization, develop more data science driven uh, solutions, let's say apps, Uber or Google Maps, that's a data science app, I would say. Someone also needs to do a job of capturing all this data, ingesting it, storing it, and making this data accessible in clean and relevant format so that it can be analyzed correctly, right? Again, just we'll try to keep it simple, but if you would have more questions, let me know. So one part of the job is data engineering, where we have to ensure that data is correctly captured, managed, processed and available for analysis so that data analytics or data science can be applied on it, right? Now, between this whole spectrum, we can broadly think of four job roles. And these are not exhaustive. There are more job roles, but these are the most important uh, job roles. And many of the times these job roles are also fungible. So one is data engineering. As you have guessed, uh, someone who is responsible for managing, extracting, and making the available data in a relevant format. Then data analyst, let's say this is a guy who is primarily doing, sorry, one second, my pen is stuck. who is responsible for data collection, data preparation, exploring, visualization, analytics, and basic statistical analysis, some predictive modeling, etc. Then data scientist, who will be responsible for doing all this? Plus, uh, they also have ability to work on unstructured data. They can also work on machine learning models, text mining, natural program, programming, et cetera, right? And last one is AI specialist or AI engineer, someone who understands how to use data science outputs to design solutions, apps, or softwares uh, out of the data science outputs, right? So let's say we do not focus too much on the AI specialist. I understand for this audience, it will be not very relevant at this stage. For few of you, it may be, and I will be happy to answer that. So anyone who is coming from non-technical background based on zero years of experience or some experience, most of the times, these two job roles will work perfectly fine. So if I talk about, let's say, the most uh, basic program, which I suggest everyone, business analytics. If you're targeting a role of data analyst, you should target uh, this course. It will help you to learn Excel, SQL, uh, Tableau, Python, right? And you have options to add uh, Power BI or even uh, data science R if needed. 
but this is a most basic course and if you are a beginner non technical you do not have uh, time to invest 6 7 months focus on it uh, if you are someone who would want to really target complete in depth knowledge and more job prospects going up to data scientist and of course covering data analyst consider data scientist the main difference is data science program comes with nascom certification with 8000 rupees of scholarship uh, so the cost is almost become same after that scholarship only is the time investment but the number of job prospects and getting a certification which is government mandated from nascom uh, is going to be huge advantage but the additional things you will be learning is basically in depth predictive modeling and machine learning which we talked about is a skill that helps you to differentiate and be a more desired professional uh, in your competition set when you are going for the interviews right then we also have a program which is equivalent to your a post grad program but much more cost effective integrated program in data science which starts from data engineering and goes up to ai specialist this program takes about 1 to 1 and a half years but the idea is uh, the amount of value learning and the benefits you get get is phenomenal uh, so people who are let's say computer science graduate or engineering graduate and they have time to invest for long term learning for them it would be very good people who are coming from technical background they were working as software engineers uh, for them they can very well start or focus on the data engineering side of the things uh, but progress towards ai engineering this program is again very good and i'm sure uh, by the way this program integrated we do not offer to anyone it's not even mentioned on the website directly this is suggested only based on your profile and suitability on one to one basis right uh, so uh, don't opt for it uh, without discussing with our counseling team we will suggest you if this is good for you only then you should be opting for it so in short for most of the people data science 360 is an absolutely fantastic program given the coverage it has given the number of job roles uh, which you can target given the kind of value uh, the uh, certification you get along with it and the price it comes at uh, and i must mention all our programs are available in classroom format in bangalore noida gurgaon also available in interactive live online format the way we are interacting right now uh, they are also available in e learning blended format that you get access to the video lectures uh, you go through them at your pace but every weekend uh, you also have on saturday and sunday doubt sessions or case study sessions conducted so that you can maintain regularity or you have any questions you can discuss those questions so they happen every weekend you can just the schedule is shared with you you can just log in based on your need and availability right so this is about the courses and certification and i believe uh, it would answer a lot of questions which you guys had uh, let me know uh, if uh, i missed anything uh, <clears throat> shobha uh, yes upcoming data science 360 weekend classes are available depending on where you are uh, you might have to see uh, bangalore yes it is mentioned 16 july uh, uh, rahul yes data science 360 is also available online ambika you can consider business analytics 360 or data science 360 uh, evaluate it your chances to get hired is very good no worries at all uh, only thing is uh, this decision the final decision whether data science or business analytics 360 you have to make we can provide uh, all the information and what are the benefits uh, but that decision you have to make but again this is offline one to one discussion uh sachin very good question so sachin has a question i would want to spend couple of minutes data analyst versus business analyst so sachin when we are talking about 
data analyst versus business analyst in data science domain and analytics domain practically it is same okay however you need to be careful when you come across a job role of business analyst please look at the job description because the term business analyst is also used in it sector so in it sector business analyst is someone who understands the business requirements works with the techno technological team software team to fulfill those requirements so in it side it's someone who is coordinating translating business requirement into technical and getting that fulfilled however in data science domain it is same uh, so no worries if you are let's say getting a job offer or considering a job role as data analyst business analyst but in data science domain it's practically same but one thing i mentioned and i do suggest everyone don't go just by the job description uh, job names job role names go for the description because sometimes you will see a company will give a job description of data analyst but they'll call it data scientist sometimes you will be calling you will be called as data analyst for first two three years of your career but you will be working most of the responsibilities as a data scientist so for example when i started my career actually there was no term like data scientist for first uh, three four five years right and after first two years of my career i was working predominantly as a role of data scientist but i was still called as uh, analytics consultant or analyst so it is very important that you understand the job description and do not just go with the designations okay sahil uh, i have one student who is also working with us like as a consultant uh, he's ba honors right he he was our student in 2015 16 then he again did a course in 2018 uh, 19 right so he also comes from ba honors we have more students coming from non technical background why i am talking about that particular student he also has now i think two books already written uh, by him uh, so uh, there could be a short video uh, sabrish if you are there you can take note of it share uh, archish video with sahil uh, to understand so in short sahil for non technical people for example we will not uh, suggest integrated program or data engineering program or ai engineering program but programs like data science 360 or business analytics 360 if you see start from very very basics fundamentals for non programmers very basic tools like excel tableau right so don't worry about that uh, the your skills and how do you perform in the interviews would matter yes it is possible if you are coming from arts background your first job may not be as a data scientist but it may be as data analyst and you may take one or two years to transition into pure data scientist role but overall as a career track uh, you can opt for data analyst to begin with okay <clears throat> hi sumit yes please tell me uh there is one question which is coming into my mind like i am from jaipur and i am working in jaipur Mm -hmm. so i am uh, i am planning to opt for the online classes that is a weekend batch only so in case mm -hmm. uh, like uh, if uh, for example if the classes start from the next week right so the very first mm -hmm. week uh, there mm -hmm. will be the session so if there are certain doubts for mm -hmm. that particular session so when those uh, doubts will be cleared mm -hmm. in the next session so there are two three ways to go about it uh one let's say you have doubts during the session itself towards the end of the session during the session you can get them cleared right let's say you are going through that session revising it and you want uh, you you came across while self study and it's a topic or which can be solved over a quick email or something you can mail uh, right so it typically takes about 24 hours uh, or something for the mail support right uh if it's depending on availability there could be a doubt support over call also and if it's a doubt which is not let's say something which is a blocker 
what we suggest you have studied one weekend you go through it during the week and you have some doubts so before the trainer will start with the next set of topics we always encourage that let us know your doubts your confusions or anything you want to discuss from the previous topics or previous session right so it could be solved very well in that session towards the end also it could be during the week depending on the nature of that doubt or it could be before you start with the next class or topic there it starts that would be great uh, thank you so much thank you so much uh, hi sumit so just wanted to confirm that for people who are uh, joining uh, you know e learning phase okay suppose we suppose someone is taking up for e learning phase so they will get the recorded session but there is also one facility which is known as live session right so yeah. where we'll be getting the live classes so for the people who are uh, getting enrolled in a live classes will they get the pre record uh, sorry recorded uh, session of once the class gets over or we have yeah. to just okay they do okay you you do so if i understand you correctly after uh, even let's say you are enrolled into live session after every class same day uh, you get the recording of that class also okay but let's say you also want that along with the live classes please give me the recorded sessions also from the previous batch right that is also possible okay and and this yeah. and the yeah. and the doubt session will be once in every way for all the uh, learners right yes yes okay, okay. so uh, the weekend out the scheduled out session that is for e learning blended learners but even if let's say you are enrolled for live classes but you want to uh, log into that but probably depending on the schedule it may not make sense Uh, you have that option but most importantly you want doubt support it, apart from your live session that is also possible okay so uh <clears throat> so guys in short if you try to see we try our best to extend every kind of flexibility understanding some real challenges when people are student or they are working how their schedules practically look like and try to extend as much as flexibility we can so for example data science 360 course is about 6 to 7 months course but from our side you get one year to complete it we understand you might take a pause you may not be able to go through the all classes in one go or you completed one module that's you have completed data visualization analytics but before python you want some time to complete those projects so all those flexibilities are inbuilt because our end objective is you successfully complete the program make that career transition as i said that is the job done for us okay uh, hi sunil uh sorry one question from rahul interesting one so rahul we do sometimes get uh, people who were preparing for upsc and then they want to later on pursue data science i hope that is not going to be the case all the best for your upsc i can tell you the amount of time it needs the call will be yours so if you can allocate about 8 to 10 hours of weekly self study that's more than sufficient uh, some people can manage it even with 6 hours some people need 12 hours but on average 8 to 10 hours uh, for this kind of program is expected so you may take a call based on that okay another good question and very practical one from sonali guys you can opt for self learning program blended learning program e learning program and if let's say you are not comfortable or it's not working for you later on you can upgrade to live classes so the blended learning program is risk free you can go for it without worrying if you later on feel the need to uh, upgrade to live you pay the differential amount and you go live with the upcoming batch right uh suraj uh this is a question we might want to discuss with you offline with the counseling team but because as i said there are few aspects in terms of communication skills in terms of aptitude they can guide you uh 
there is no clear cut answer because we have students from BBA going for data science also and for business analytics also. Hi, Sumit. Uh, sorry, one second. Uh, Amit, uh, there is a question from Amit Yadav. Amit, it would be good if we can schedule a call uh, during the coming days. Uh, we need to discuss this in more detail about your profile and all that. I'll, I'll be happy to speak with you and help you to reach a decision. Uh, Swapna, yes, we do get candidates who had gap for various reasons uh, with right skills, with certification, internship if needed. They are able to start back their career or start their career. Uh, DB, for someone coming from programming background, data engineering is also one role which is highly in demand. Trust me, right now we are able to easily find people for data analysts or data scientists for our recruiters, for our partner companies, relatively easy, but finding data engineers is actually difficult. So data engineers is highly in demand. In last one and a half years, uh, there's a lot of shortage uh, we are seeing on the data engineering side. So anyone who is coming from programming background might want to consider a program like AI engineering we have, which is a combination of data science and data engineering. Great. Uday, uh, I would recommend, uh, it's fine if you have gone for the DVA program, you must have evaluated and have your reasons, but at least uh, try to go with uh, data, uh, sorry, business analytics 360 course. And the reason is something we have already talked about, which is this part. Uh, that with Business Analytics 360, you will be able to cover uh, all this, right? And you will be able to reach till this stage. So you may still be able to upgrade it, check with the counseling team. Uh, I suggest, since you understand uh, the domain better after the session, reevaluate it. And if it is okay for you to invest uh, more time and little more money, consider going with Business Analytics 360. Right. So guys, uh, we are well over the time. Uh, I would uh, request uh, to share your details on the form which Sabrish has shared. We can share this recording. We can share this document with you with the reference to different type of blogs and learning resources. Uh, for If there are questions which are unanswered, my apologies for that. Uh, but we would be happy to connect with you during the week and help you with all the uh, answers over the call as and when needed. So feel free to reach out to the respective counselors you are in touch with. They will help you to connect with me or uh, other senior team members. But most of the times, if uh, let's say you attended this webinar, I'll be trying to connect with you uh, in all probabilities. Thank you guys. I hope uh, you found the session informative and worthy of your time. Uh, happy weekend, enjoy the remaining weekend. Thank you, Sumit, uh, and wish you this year. Thank you. Uh, Sabrish, over to you if you have any details to share with them.